I'm gonna show you how to model with terrible topology. Now, I know the quad boys are gonna hear this and probably collapse, so please remain seated if you are one of them. I don't wanna be responsible for anyone, you know, having to call up the ambulance or something when I present this information. So let's hop right into it. So before I can, you know, make the topic this video, I have to use a different software to kind of demonstrate a point here. So this is plasticity, it doesn't really matter. You could use Moi 3D, Fusion, SolidWorks. It doesn't really matter, right? I'm just using plasticity here for demonstration. So this is a model that was created in plasticity, okay? It's a very basic model. Now in plasticity or really any CAD software, there is no such thing as topology. It doesn't physically exist. Like there's no edit mode in here. Like you, you don't go into edit mode in this program because polygons aren't a thing. So basically, you know, with these types of softwares, you can create some very interesting shapes and designs and different, you know, fusions and booleans and things like that. Works very similar to Blender, except there's just no edit mode basically. So, you know, I can go in here, I can press uh, B to bevel. You can kind of see what's going on here. And uh, you know you can do all sorts of different you know interesting operations, uh, very similar to Blender. The only difference here is you know in Plasticity or any CAD software there are no polygons. There's no such thing as topology. Now let's quickly go to the portfolio of a professional designer. So somebody I like is Aiden Garazio. I think he has fantastic stuff. Um, let's just find something interesting in here, okay? maybe i don't know this grenade okay so if we scroll down here you can already see the software he's using he's using moi 3d it's very similar to plasticity there's no such thing as topology in here this was all designed you know inside of moi 3d according to his portfolio i've seen some of his stuff before he does use moi 3d and you can see the software right here this was modeled in moi 3d a different 3d modeling software very clearly. So I'm going to repeat this one more time. There are no such thing as polygons inside of these softwares. The only thing you're really focusing on when you use these softwares is uh, is basically how the design looks. That's all you're really worried about. And the same type of thing applies here in plasticity. Now what you can do is you can model the same exact shapes inside of Blender. The workflow is just slightly different because now you're dealing with polygons instead of, you know, vectors and mathematics, right? So in plasticity, another thing you can do is you can actually um, select your object and export it into polygons. I'm going to do that real quick, okay? So let's go to, I haven't used this in a while, I believe it's up here. We're going to go to export and save as. And we're going to choose a, let's choose an OBJ. And we'll just call this, you know, example, it doesn't matter. And basically what you can do here is you can choose to export as triangles, quads. Now the quads feature is not really quads, it's triangulated. And you can also use n-gons, which is the feature that, uh, that I prefer to use personally, okay? Now density is basically the resolution. It can be very blocky or it can be, you know, much higher resolution if you set this to something like one. So we can just set this to, you know, 0.5 is probably fine. Leave all the other settings alone and then click on the OK button. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this OBJ file of this object that I just exported and I'm going to bring it into Blender. All right, so here's the same exact object imported into Blender. Now, if I go here into the topology, you can see it's pretty messy. There's a lot of extra excess geometry here. Now you could try to clean this with a limited dissolve and try setting this to something low. It's not really gonna work as well as you might want it to. And you can see overall this topology here is uh, it's quite messy. Some of it's okay, like back here is not terrible, but you know, this topology is 100% a mess. I think we could all agree with that. However, if I go into object mode and I'm just trying to render, you know, some sort of concept design or create a portfolio piece, I do not care even in the slightest 
how the topology looks. I don't care how messy it is. I don't care how terrible it is. I do not care at all. So a lot of quad boys have this weird obsession with the moment you have a model inside of Blender, you know, they freak out if the topology is bad. Now, I'm going to play devil's advocate here in a second because they do have a point in certain situations. I don't want beginners to get in here and think they can just be using, you know, god awful topology in every situation. That's not the point of this video. The point I'm trying to make is if I use plasticity, for someone to say, oh, your topology is bad, doesn't make any sense. There's, there's no such thing inside of a software like this. It, that phrase doesn't make any sense. But the moment I bring it into Blender, all of a sudden, you know, people freak out about topology just by importing the same object into Blender. Guys, it's the same exact shape. This shape and this shape, they're the same thing. And if you're just going for a cool portfolio piece or a concept render, like for example, I could literally go here into rendering mode, drop a material on this, right? And, and who cares? I don't care how the topology looks. I ultimately care, you know, how exactly does this thing look in the viewport? And inside the viewport here, you can see, you know, I could kind of move this around. I could render it. And this is essentially what these, you know, big name designers, for example, Aiden here in this example, this is what they're doing. They're modeling this in some sort of CAD software. They're mainly focused on the design itself. The topology is not a thing. It's not even a concern because it doesn't exist. And I guarantee you, you know, for a professional designer, like Aiden here is an example, you know, you could literally take any of these models here and I guarantee you, if you export this from the CAD software and bring it into Blender, the topology is going to look absolutely terrible. But who cares? The only goal with these types of concept renders and concept designs is to create a design. That's the only goal. We're not concerned about the topology in the slightest. So you could take any of these, you could import them into Blender, and the topology situation is going to be the same. It's probably going to be an absolute mess. So for people who have this weird obsession with perfect topology when it simply isn't needed, have absolutely no clue what they are talking about. So you know, when I make videos showing how to create renders or how to create different designs and things like this, you know, those videos aren't geared towards a VFX artist, for example. Now to be fair, perhaps, you know, I have hundreds of videos explaining this, but uh, I guess, you know, new people come in every single day. So to be fair, you know, I could repeat this in every single video, but there becomes a certain point where you think this would be common information, even for people experienced in Blender, but apparently it isn't. So that's kind of why I'm creating this video here to really demonstrate this point. Now I am 100% going to play devil's advocate here because, you know, there's an other side to the coin. If you're using this piece, you know, this is probably a bad example here. It's like a mechanical looking piece, right? But say this was for some sort of VFX project or it was meant to be deformed or something like this, right? Or in certain situations in games, you know, this topology is probably not gonna slide, right? For example, if I try to deform this object, um, I don't like this new setting that Blender made, but we'll go in here and go into simple deform. It can't deform well, I mean, you can already see the shading's going crazy, it's breaking, it just won't deform well. Now if I remesh this, I don't know how well quad remesher will do it here, but I'll quickly hit it with quad remesher, which is a pretty cool add-on. You don't need it, but I'm gonna use it as an example. And it did an okay job. Let me shade this smooth, subdivide it, whatever. Not the best, but I'm gonna go ahead and deform it now, just as an example. And you're gonna see this thing is actually going to deform a lot better. See what I mean? It's not, there's no weird shading issues or anything like that. And that is simply because, you know, it has clean quad based topology now. So there are situations like this where, let me undo it, you know, where you simply need good topology where it matters and is an important thing. But if you're somebody who's trying to you know, create professional quality designs and concept renders and things like that, the topology does not matter in the slightest. I do not care how it looks. It is zero relevance to me. 
So, you know, when people say, you know, oh, it's apology bad, or, you know, what about the topology, or this or that, and it really doesn't make any sense because it's on the same coin as saying, oh, the topology here is bad, when it doesn't even exist, right? For some weird reason, the moment you have the same type of thing inside of Blender, it now becomes an issue. And this I simply boils down to people being ignorant, people not knowing when topology is important and when it really doesn't matter at all. So, you know, I could spend every single video explaining this at the beginning, every single video, disclaimer, 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 but th there becomes a point where people need to do their own research. They need to learn the ins and outs of 3D software, when topology is important, when it isn't important, what are their goals? Are they different than mine, for example? These types of things are the things people need to research and learn about when they're getting into 3D so they can accumulate the right type of information. Now, if you're someone who does need good topology for, you know, certain situations like VFX or maybe you need to deform the object or whatever other pipeline requires it, I do have plenty of tutorials on the channel. You can just search, you know, do a little bit of thinking and deep diving, you'll find stuff on the channel. And also, I have other tutorials, for example, I have a game asset tutorial where I show you how to use booleans and n-gons for a static mesh and still get a very clean result. That's a, I think, a three hour long tutorial I made a couple years ago. Very informative stuff, so if you want to kind of have the full idea of different topological situations, I guess you could say, you know, check out some of those videos. You're definitely going to learn something new. And also, if you're new to hard surface modeling and Blender, you can always grab our Jumpstart course. And for all the quad boys out there, trust me, we will not be using quads in that tutorial series. We'll be using end guns everywhere and solely focused on a good looking design. So if you have an issue with that, that course is probably not the best for you. But if you're interested in learning our different workflows for hard surface modeling and you're new to Blender, you can grab that course for free, link in the description. So to end off the video, next time you're modeling, think to yourself, is my final goal to have clean topology or is my final goal to have a clean concept design? I don't know what your goals are because everyone's different, but if you're just going for, you know, maybe you want to be like Aiden's work here and you want to create some very badass designs, don't worry about topology at all. It doesn't matter. Worry about the quality of your designs and focus solely on improving your design skills, not how clean your mesh is in terms of topology. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully this gave a little bit of clarity to people who are otherwise confused, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.